Hi guys, uh, Will Terry here, and uh, today I'm going to answer the question uh, or basically talk about my advice to beginning artists. And this was a video, oh, before I do that, let me just uh, mention that you can always uh, connect with me or find out what I'm doing at my blog at willterry.blogspot.com. And um, today, I, um, or a few days ago, I received a letter, um, which was a really nice letter, and it complimented my work. And then um, this, this person said, um, the, the gist of the letter was, and I'll just read some of it here, uh, I'm in love with drawing, but to be completely honest, I'm terrible at it. And then she says some other things and then goes on to say, I just wanted to know how you think would be the best way to get started learning. Also, where do you get your ideas from? My problem is that I can never figure out what to draw. And when I do think of something, I'm always unsure where to start. Um, and so I wanted to address that a little bit and say that, you know, a lot of people are in your situation where you, you don't know what. And this person went on and talked about uh, how they had to kind of go into a different career path for a while and didn't get to take art classes, um, missed art class one, two, three, et cetera, in high school. And this person is now 21 years old. First off, let me just tell you that when I was 21, uh, my drawing was pretty horrible. And I've mentioned this before, but I, I was led into my college pro program, college illustration program on probation because I wasn't good enough. I wasn't as good as uh, the other students. So um, there's a, you can make a lot of improvement. I've had 20 plus years to get where I am now. And, uh, but I was terrible. And so um, you're not behind if you're 21 and you're um, and you're feeling like you know you can't draw to the ability or to the, the 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 level that you want to. Don't panic because you have one. You have a lifetime. You don't have to get great overnight. Um, and it's going to take a while. Um, but I did come up with a few tips, uh, things that you could try to do um, to accelerate your learning and to get better. So one is is pretty obvious, and it's to draw every day. To make a commitment to draw every single day. Uh, in your sketchbook so if you're not and, and another thing is to commit this is something that made my drawing a lot better commit to carrying a sketchbook with you every time you leave the house so it doesn't matter where you're going even if you're going somewhere where you think you won't have time to draw carry the sketchbook with you anyway and if something comes up where you end up sitting or having a little bit of extra time or waiting when you didn't expect to wait you can pull it out and start drawing um, but commit to drawing every day and then you can you can do uh, a few things now this person also goes on to say let me read some more here um, I'm, uh, now I'm 20 years 21 years old and I can barely even draw a proper human form um, let's see that wasn't where I wanted to read um, so this person is let's see I can't even okay so it says uh, where do you get your ideas from? My problem is I can never figure out what to draw and when I do think of something I'm always unsure of where to start and so that's what I wanted to talk about now. So the first thing is and this is something that we can attack more in a drawing class because you, there is some some uh, the good thing about having a drawing class is you can get a point of departure and I think sometimes people want almost like a permission or, or a kind of an understanding of where to start and what to do in the beginning um, and that's hard to do without actually showing the drawing and that's one of the reasons why we have our live classes but I did come up with a few things that might help a little bit aside from drawing every day um, is to mix it up and to force yourself to draw things that are unlikely um, and that's one one place where you can get ideas so one of the myths is that creative people just have these amazing ideas bouncing out of their head just whenever they want and that's just simply not true uh, creative people have figured out how to come up with good ideas through working through problems so uh, one thing you can do is force yourself to come up with unlikely combinations such as mixing two animals together you know pick two animals don't think of the drawing just pick two animals at random and say I have to make a combination of these two animals you could actually take two animals and make five combinations that look totally different of those two animals. Um, you could take the attributes of five animals and make a creature. So you could take like a snake body and you could add a bird head and wings and 
uh, cloven hooves and horns and make this horrible looking uh, monstrous kind of thing that that's really creative people are just um, I think they're 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 good uh, especially like uh, you know, as far as we're talking about illustrators I think they're good at taking uh, at forcing themselves to try things um, and so I think the people that improve the fastest are people that aren't afraid to fail because they're like I'm just gonna try this and it might look horrible, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to force myself to try it. Um, another thing you can do is experiment with scale. You know, take an object that's usually small, like a rat, and put a cowboy on its back, jumping over buildings or something like that. You know, um, force yourself and give yourself assignments, things that you wouldn't normally draw. If you stare at a blank page in your sketchbook, um, you're not going to ever be able to draw anything. You have to start drawing. And so, if you can't think of anything that's really interesting to draw, Draw something in the room that you're in. Draw something if you're outside. Draw something outside, um, and then maybe that'll give you an idea to add something to it. Some some kind of crazy thing to add to it. Um, put put objects together that don't belong together in this world, like polar bears and penguins, um, and get people talking about. Well, you know, polar bears and penguins can never be together. Maybe you do some little twist on that 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 shows in your illustration that they do belong together in your world. Um, and so, um, another thing I, and I don't have them right here. I have them, um, packed away. Um, but I have, I have a pile of sketchbooks that are filled up that are just huge. And, um, and now that I've been drawing on the iPad for the last, oh, what, four or five years, I've stopped filling up sketchbooks, which is kind of sad because, um, I don't have those little artifacts anymore. Uh, I'm just doing all my sketching on the iPad, which is kind of a downer. But I'd have even more of a stack of sketchbooks today. And I, so I would say, um, you know, just, just looking at the difference between someone who is more advanced and someone who's less advanced is probably just the, no, the amount of work that they've done. So you've got to be drawing all the time. Another thing is to copy other people's work. I know it's it's I've talked about this before, too. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time because I do have a video um, called uh, Copy Your Mentor's Work or something, so you might want to want to watch that. But uh, I love the sports analogy of, um, you know, people, uh, you know, especially uh, coaches and stuff, making their, the, let's say, basketball players run drills of layups and stuff. And you, you would say, well, they're all they're all running the same drill, so that's not artistic. But if you watch pro basketball players, college basketball players, there's a lot of art to the moves that they use. Because uh, two people are going to do a layup totally different. They're going to do it, have different style and different flair. Um, and, but they're using a lot of the same similar fundamentals and mechanics of actually being able to make those moves that are learned doing drills. And drills are the work uh, of, from other people that have gone before them that have figured out what works and what doesn't work. And so you end up practicing the moves that other people made. So uh, we're taught in school not to copy, that copying is bad. And blatant ripping someone off and copying is bad. But if you're doing it to learn, it's not. And if you're if you're treating it like you're just doing drills, but you're not trying to pass it off as original work, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's what you should be doing. Again, I talk about that more in the, in the other video, so I don't want to spend a lot of time doing that. Um, so, and then this uh, the 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 final wrap up on this was um, person actually asking about our online classes. So this is kind of a shameless plug for our. SVS classes, and I'll just de describe what we're gonna, what we're doing there, and what is going to be coming up in the in 2014. Um, so this person goes on to say, "I'm 21, can barely even draw proper proper human form." I guess what I'm trying to ask is, do you have any books or classes in mind that would help me get started? I'm really interested in learning all I can. Currently work full time now, nine to five. Looked at some of the classes and was confused about live classes. Is it all online? So yes, it is all, all online. Our SVS classes, excuse me, <clears throat> SVS, which is School of Visual uh, Storytelling, is um, is all online. We use GoToMeeting, and um, you can find a link to it on um, my blog. So just go there if you're interested, and you can look on the side and see our SVS classes, and you can go right out to our website and check it out. What we do is we have a live class and then we record the live class in a video recording so you can see everything that happens in the class and then we sell those in our store 
So after the class ends, we can you can still buy the video recording of what happened in the class. You just can't ask questions. You can't um, you won't get the homework assignments. You won't get the critiques and and that sort of thing. But that is a cheaper way of doing it. Um, we are going to be having we're trying to really um, this year really try to get a lot more classes to round out what we've been doing so we're going to kind of going back in some ways and doing some more beginner classes we're actually experimenting right now with doing free live classes for our beginner classes and then selling the recordings in our in our store um, and I know that being this is YouTube I have no idea when you're hitting this video but um, we're actually doing a couple live classes this is January 2014 we're doing a couple of uh, live classes right now that are free and if you go to my blog you can actually um, get a link to join we can have a hundred people join those classes uh, the free classes when we do our paid classes we only allow up to 25 people in uh, because the, we can we can actually um, service those people a lot better by being able to, to field questions and be able to get um, their work critiqued and if we had a hundred people it would be too many but um, but so anyway, we're going to be having some beginning drawing classes, and I wish we had them right now because this would help um, the person who who wrote this letter um, is exactly what they need is is really getting off the ground and getting a good drawing class. And a lot of times people will ask me, where should I start? I want to I want. In fact, I had a friend, a long um, a really close friend the other day who actually works um, for a uh, a big company and is is doing something completely non art related and she asked me you know I've always wanted to get into art and I know you're teaching online now is that only for advanced people or is there is it also for um, uh, people like me who are beginning who just don't really know what I want to do with it but I wanna maybe do it as a hobby and and learn to draw and paint um, on my own what should, what's the first place where do you start what is the first thing you do and drawing really is the first thing it's the key to any good painting um, so if you want the final to be a watercolor painting or you want the final to be an oil painting or a digital painting or whatever um, then drawing is the, the absolute fundamental key where you should start I like to look use the analogy of um, building a house if you if you look at the drawing as the framing so the drawing is the structure it's the frame. It's it's when you know you can see the house being built, but you can see all the way through it because there's no no uh, drywall. There's no wall wallboard on there yet. If the if the if the framing is crooked, it doesn't matter how much um, expensive paint and carpet and furnishings you put in there. The house is always going to be crooked. So that's why drawing is more important than painting. You've got to learn how to draw well um, because your paintings will never look good if you if you don't have a good drawing so in fact I have a class that I'm teaching at, at UVU right now and all we're focusing on is getting a good drawing so that these uh, students can then go into other classes and do good paintings um, so um, that's not going to help you immediately because we don't have the drawing classes yet the beginning drawing classes but we're going to get there this year so if you if you if you can't find if you can't wait then I would look online for other beginning drawing classes and just get going um, and and really try to get that drawing going keep that sketchbook with you draw all the time and um, you'll you will just automatically get better I mean um, there's 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 no two ways about it um, another thing one last thing I would say on this is make sure going back to the sports analogy that you have mentors that you're following and that you're you're constantly looking at their work and even copying their work so for instance if you asked any high school basketball player who are your heroes in basketball they would list them right away they'd be very they're probably wearing the jersey with the number on there it's amazing to me how many illustration students I ask well who are your heroes in illustration and they can't name one and I, I would say well the basketball player is way more into his or her thing than you are with your thing um, or you just don't realize how important it is to look at people who are doing it really well and to to get inspired by what they're doing so that's the that's uh, the advice that I have on for, for um, beginning artists and I hope you've enjoyed watching this video 
and I'll see you on my next video.